Okay, good morning class. So at this point we're looking at the grade 10 paper 2. Last year's uh, paper from our school. As you can see the paper was two and a half hours long. And the marks was 125 as we had for paper 1. People, you guys will write the same um, uh, duration of the paper as well as the same mark as your paper did. Okay, so we're looking at paper 2 as, as indicated. So the first question says, The tuck shop at Sansuzi High School sells soft drinks, drink cans. The Yes Society, the Young Environmentalist Society, collected soft drink cans for the cycle, for the cycling for the period of 20 days. The number of cans collected was recorded and the data is given below. Okay. So firstly, is this number in, in numbers in order? No. So what we have to do first is get the numbers in order. Okay. Can somebody give me the numbers in order, please? 48. So what I do in the exam is I cancel out. Okay, next. 50. 52. 59. 60. 59. 59. 60. 59. 60. 59. 60. 59. 60. 59. 73 76 76 76 76 76 76 The median. What is the median, people? The middle number of sorted data. How many data points are here? 20. 20. 20 by 2? 10. So since it's even, there's two numbers in the middle. So it's the 10th number and the 11th number. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or you could have to say 10 and 11. Not so. So quartile 2. So it will be 76 plus 78 divided by 2 is going to give you 76. Okay. Let's look at the next question. The next question says calculate the mean number of cans. People, for the mean number, what do we do? We add up all the numbers divided by the number of numbers you got. Not so. Let's go. Um, give me that uh, data values again. So the mean, I'm going to add it all up first and then divide it by 20. Go for it, uh, this Kanya, 48 plus? 50. Yes. 50. Yeah. 49. 49. 60. 60. 59. 60. 68. 68. 73 76 times 3 73 plus 76 times 3 yes 78 78 79 80 81 82 84 91 92 92 98 98 That it? Yes sir. It adds up to give you 1485. Is that correct? Yes sir. 1485 divided by 20. 
This is an answer. 74 comma 2. So 74 comma 2. That's a lot of cats, huh? Okay. Probably might be a big school. Or do you guys drink so much uh, gas food? Some things. The question is, is calculate the interquartile range. How do you calculate the interquartile range? It's going to be Q3 minus Q1. So what we need to do is, we need to find the median of the lower set of data, not so the lower half. So because these two numbers in the middle, and 76 belong to the bottom, half and 78 belong to the top half. If it had to be an odd amount of numbers, I would have crossed it up. Okay. So we have 10 in the lower set. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. So it's 5, 10, 6 number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the two numbers. Not so? So for quartile, 1 is going to be 60 plus 68 divided by 2. It's going to give you 64. So that is 64. Quartile 3. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 82. So that will be 82 plus 82 divided by 2, not so, which is simply 82. Well, if you didn't know that, you just do it. Okay. So what is 64 minus 82? 82. Sorry? 82. So what does that mean to say? That means to say that the middle 50% of the data uh, is arranging over 18 units. Okay. Represent the five number summary by, by drawing a box and whisker diagram with the above data set. People, the five number summary, number summary consists of the lowest value, quarter one, quarter two, Quartile 3 and the maximum value. Not so. So your lowest value is? 48. 48. And your highest value is? 98. 98. So it will be 48 and 98. So median, which was quartile 2, I've calculated to be? 77. Then the one was 82, no? And the other one was? 64. 64. So what do I do is I draw a line. We're going to go 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, so that is, I think that is free. Otherwise, you could make it longer, it's going to be better free. Okay? Again, we use a ruler to, 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 to do the spacing. It must be evenly spaced. Okay, you guys understand? Yes, sir. So lowest, so if this is 40, 50, 60, 17, 18, 19. So you must go to? 100. So we have 98 as well. So 48. 48 gets a? Huh? 48 then. 98, very close to 100. Also get a dot. Quartile 2 gets a? Huh? Stroke. So it's between 70 and 80. So 75 is there, but it's between 75 and 80. So it's approximately there. Not so? Yes. So that is 77. The 65 is here, so just less than that. It's going to give you 60. There's 80. So 80, there's 85, so 82 is approximately there. You see that, people? There's your box. And there's your whiskers. Normally we draw that with a ruler as well, okay? Yes, sir. So people, you guys understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Any confusion? Is there any confusion? Okay. The next question, we are given the distribution table here. A phone company conducted a survey regarding the duration of phone calls made by people in a certain community. 
The information was then tabulated as below. So put in the table basically. So the duration of calls in minutes between and equal to 2 and 5 is 47. So 47 of the mile is within that range. Can you see that? Yes. Or that interval basically. 139 is within that interval and so on and so on. The question says calculate the approximate mean for the duration of the calls in the community. Should be in this community. Yeah? So, what do we say here? How much does this add up to? So it's four, the, the, the total wasn't given, eh? so it's 47 plus 139 plus uh, 211 plus 102 plus uh, 58 plus 19. That gives you 576. Not so. 576 and that is another the total is 576 okay so to calculate the sum of the values of course we to start here and we say 2 plus 5 what's 2 plus 5? 7 and 7 divided by 2? 3.5 so the midpoint of that class is 3.5 and there is 47 of them. Okay. What's 8 plus 5? 13. Divided by 2? 6.5 times 139. Did you see that? 8 plus 11 is 19 divided by 2? 9.5. And we times that by 211. Not so? The next one? 25 divided by 2? 12.5. And that's going to give us times 102. Not so? Plus 14 plus 17? 31. 31 divided by 2 is 15.5. We multiply that by 58. And the last one is? 37. 37 divided by 2? 18.5. Is that correct? Yes, Multiply by? Oops, we don't need such a long one. So it's 5.76. Then we work out the numerator. So it's 3.5 multiplied by 47 plus 6.5 multiplied by 47. Okay. 6.5 multiplied by 139 plus 9.5 multiplied by 9.5 multiplied by 211 plus 12.5 multiplied by 102 plus 15.5 multiplied by 58 plus 18.5 multiplied by 5598 is 5000 500 yeah. okay. So if I divide that by 576, this is an answer of 9,72. Yeah. Okay, so it's with the uh, approximately in this category. In that interval. Alright, you guys understand? Yes. See, any confusion? Okay. Can you carry on? Yes, okay. Let's do this over here. <coughs> the next question says, what percentage of calls this um, lasted less than eight minutes? What percentage of calls lasted less than eight minutes? Okay. Shall we look at eight minutes? This is this is greater than or equal to eight. Not so. So what is less than eight minutes? Is that value and that value? Not so. so the percentage of calls is going to be is going to be forty-seven plus one thirty-nine divided by the total. And what's the total? Five hundred. 
576. The multiplier is 5? 100. And that's the one to percentage. Alright, so we say uh, 47 plus 139 over 576 multiplied by 100. Can you give us an answer? 32, comma? 29. Okay. Is there any confusion? You all understand, eh? The last question. In which interval does the upper quartile lie? So the upper quartile, how do you know that? Up? 3 over 4 times the total number, which is 576. We work it out 3 over 4 multiplied by 576. Gives us 400 and so it's approximately the 431st person or entry. Okay? So at the end of this class, I've considered 47. So from the 48th person to the 139th person. No. If we add this up, what do we get? 186. 186. So from the 48th person to the 186th person is in this category. You all understand? Now we add this up, what we get here? It's going to be 397. So that means to say, from the 187th person all the way to 397th, not person, but entry or call duration is within that category. Or that interval. You all understand? The next one? 499. What are we looking for? 430. So in other words, the 398th person all the way to 499th person is in this category here. Yes. Which includes the 432nd person. Or entry, sorry, in this case. Or call. So therefore in which class interval does the, 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 the upper quartile lie? Therefore it lies for t, your time, has to be greater or equal to 11, but less than 14. Okay, that's how we work out that one. Okay. That's good. Let's carry on. So you have a told that in the diagram below, in the diagram a bit bigger. In the diagram below, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. People, if A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, what do we know? Two pairs of opposite four, four things we know. Two pairs of opposite sides of? Equal. 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 Two pairs of opposite sides of? Parallel. parallel. Did I say parallel? Okay, two pairs of opposite sides parallel, two pairs of opposite sides equal. Another one. Two pairs of opposite angles are equal. And one more that is not evident here. One more. The angles bisect each other. Not so. But um, since there's no other angles, there's not going to be applicable here. Not so. And unless we draw it, then that's so. Okay. So all of those things must come to mind. Alright. The question says determine the gradient of AB. Determine the gradient of AB. So how do you work out the gradient? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So A is negative 4 and 4, not so? B is 4 and 1. Okay, so that's going to be X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Or if you made that X2, this must be Y2, X1, Y1. So it's going to be 1 minus 4 over 4 minus minus 4. So it's going to be minus 3 over the gradient of AB is going to be minus 3 over A. What do you notice? The gradient is indeed negative. So the graph is decreasing. Is there any confusion there? Alright. So let's look at 2.2. 2.2. .2. Question 2.2 says hence. 
determine the equation of CD. Hence, determine the equation of CD. So if you're looking at CD, what do we notice about CD? We know that CD is parallel to AB. AB. People without the gradient of AB, could we have calculated the equation of CD? What do we need for it uh, to calculate the equation of straight line? Two points or an angle and a point, the angle of inclination, for the gradient, uh, the, the, um, if this is 45, then what is the gradient of this line? Don't you guys know this? Should have done it in grade 9. The rise and the run will be the same. So the gradient here is 1. The delta y over delta x is the same. The rise and the run is the same. So uh, if the diagram lies that way, and this is 135, and this gradient is minus 1. Let's make a note there if you didn't know that. Okay, you need to know those things. Okay. Okay, so as we said, we need two points to calculate the equation of the line, or we needed the, an angle and a point, or we need a gradient and a point on the line. You guys understand? And also, if you had a y intercept and a point, add another point on the line that it would constitute as two points anyway. Okay, so people, if lines are parallel, what do we know? If lines are parallel, what do we know? The gradient is going to be equal. So the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of DC, which is equal to minus 3 over 8. So Y is equal to minus 3 over 8X plus C. Now to calculate C, I need one point on this line. Do I have such a point? Okay, and which point is that, Amber? Does it look like you're busy with Mats, Michael? You like somebody I know now? Do we have a point that's lying on CD? C, C. C yes. So we did substitute C. Which is 6 and 8, 3. That's an X and a Y. So what do we have? 3 is equal to? Negative 3 over 8 into 6 plus C. So it becomes 3, you bring that over the equal sign, plus 3 over 8 times 6. So that is 5,25 or 5 and a quarter or 21 over 4. Is that correct? So that's 21 over 4. So therefore, the equation of CD is y is equal to negative 3 over 8x plus 21 over 4. Okay. Any confusion there? So we say y is equal to negative 3 over 8x plus 21 over 4. Okay. Let's go to the next question, question 2.3. Write down the coordinates of D. People, there's, there's two ways of doing it. Well, there's definitely more than two ways. But the one way you can do it is you can calculate the midpoint of AC. Let's do both ways. Let's call the midpoint of AC M. Okay, so let's calculate M. It's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay? This is the midpoint formula, not so. 
So, for m, it's going to be minus 4 plus 6 over 2. And 4 plus, what is this? A 9. The 3. Is, is that lower? Doesn't look lower. But okay, it's 3. So the gradient here, another gradient, but the midpoint is uh, 2 over 2 is 1, and 7 over 2. We all agree with that. Now, if you work, that way in the reverse. Okay? Then we have this now being the, the midpoint, the end point. So it's 4 plus, let me just write this down, is that the x b plus x d over 2 is equal to the x midpoint. Not so. We just say x1 and x2 is the same thing. Eh? Now just um, relating it here quickly. And then we've got yb plus yd over 2 is equal to the y midpoint. But the midpoints we have now. Okay, so xb which is 4 plus xd which is x. You see that people? It's x over 2 is equal to x mid which is 1. And on the other end we got 1 plus y over 2 is equal to y mid which is 7 over 2. So you cross multiply here. So it's 4 plus x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2. Okay, and on the other end when we cross multiply the 2's will cancel. We find an LCM. So y is equal to 6. 7 minus 1. So therefore D is going to be 2 and Okay. That is one way of doing it. Okay. And for two marks, you will think, okay, that's a bit too much for two marks. Not so. You're writing. Right, right. I'm going to do it now. I need a space. Okay. Otherwise, on the other end, if you take in consideration this, if that is D, that's your X and Y, this is C, which is 6 and 3, this is uh, D, or B, no? which is 4 and 1, and this is, of course, A, which is negative 4 and 1. So remember in the parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. equal. So this length here is the same as that length, and this length here is the same as that length. Not so. So I'm going to use that fact. So if I move from 3, if I move down here, I'm affecting my Y. Not so. So from 3 to 1, what I'm going to is that? Two. two. So that is two, so this must be two. two. So you see, I don't add that y value. Now, if I got this here, so four plus two is six. Okay. And if you move here across, am I affecting my x or my y? Six. To x. So negative four to four is how many units? Eight. Eight. So how many units must this be? But again, I don't have this value. So it's going to be 6 minus, because I'm going in the negative value. 6 minus 8 is negative. Therefore, D is negative 2 and 6. Why do I have positive 2 here? Did I have negative 2 earlier on? Let's check here. Should have been negative, no? Is my mistake. Can you see here? Suppose we have taken 4 over, it's going to be 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. You all agree? Sorry about that. But as you see here, it's supposed to get the same value both ways. Okay? So it is negative 2 and 6. Sorry about that.
Okay, anything else? Any other confusion? No? Leave it though. If E is the midpoint, E is E the midpoint of ED. So, this is a different color here. E is E the midpoint of ED. So, where is ED? CD, sorry. E is the midpoint. So, you will justify your answer by means of calculation. So, that means to say that this not, you can't just say, yes, it's the midpoint, or no, it's not the midpoint. You must justify your answer by calculation, and then you draw your conclusion if it is or not. So if you just say yes or no, no more. Okay. So how do we do that? Firstly, is the what? Y intersect of this line. Not so. So how do we calculate Y intersect? We did x equal to zero. Since we have the equation here, if I put zero there, then Y is equal to twenty one over. So the coordinates of E is 0 and 21 over 4. Not so? Right. Now, how do we work out the midpoint of DC? It's going to again be x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Not so? So there we got negative 2 plus 6 over 2. And then 6. Plus 3 over 2. So if this answer here is 0 and 21 over 4, it the then it is the midpoint. If it's not, if it's anything other than that, it's not the midpoint. Not so? So then this works out to be 4, which is 2, and 9 over 2. Since that is not the same, so therefore, E is not the midpoint of C. Okay. Alright. Let's carry on. Question 3. Question 3, we are given triangle PPR with P being 1 and negative 1 Q on Q on has the equation x minus 3y equals negative 6 So that's PQ That's PQ Q on or this Q Okay, thank you. And the equation of PR is y equals x minus 2. Okay, first question says write down the coordinates of Q. People, what is Q? Y intercept, not so. Q is your y intercept. So you know, it's the y-intercept of, of QR. Not so. So how do you work out the y-intercept? x equal to 0. So we say 0 minus 3y is equal to negative 6. y is going to be 2. Ever answer the question? So therefore Q is 0 and 2. Okay. Let's look at the next question. So here we are told 3.2 prove that PQ is perpendicular to QR. So if lines are perpendicular, what do we know of the gradients? Product of the two gradients is? That's one way of doing it, otherwise I can work out the distances and uh, prove the converse of the theorem of Pythagoras. Okay, then that would work as well. But for three marks, I would, I would definitely think it's the gradient should be suffice. So the gradient of PQ, so let's go PQ, uh, PQ, 
right? Which is this here. Do you remember this is 0 and 2? If I can work out the gradient of PQ, how do you work out gradient, people? Change in Y. Change in Y with change in X. Okay. So Q is going to be 2 minus minus 1. Not so. So it's 2 minus minus 1, which is plus 1, and 0 minus 1. Is this gradient going to be positive or negative? Negative line to the left is a decreasing function or decreasing uh, graph. So it's going to be 0 minus 1, which gives an answer of negative 3, which confirms my, my um, observation. Not so. So the gradient here, of course, is negative 3. Then for QR, do I have the coordinates or R? No. no. So I can't work out the gradient using two points. However, we are given the equation of this line. Can you see that? Yes. So QR, the equation is um, x minus 3y is equal to negative 6. So what do I do? I need to get it in standard form, which is y equals mx plus c. So you get negative 3y is equal to minus x minus 6. You divide by negative 3 throughout. So y is equal to a third x plus 2. So what's the gradient of QR? So the gradient of QR is, if the standard equation is y is equal to mx plus c, what denotes your gradient here? M. So what's your m value here? A third is. So is that suffice for us to conclude? No, it's not enough. So we say since, we state the obvious. Since the gradient of PQ times the gradient of QR is equal to a third times negative 3, which is negative 1. Therefore, uh, QR is perpendicular to PQ. Okay. Yes. There's an add here. This can also be written as uh, y is equal to a third x plus two. Okay. Any confusion? Okay. This girlfriend is getting the best sleep of her life. You okay? You sick? You sick people, you must stay at home. Or is it only in a sick in a match period? <laughs> people just look at... So people now, this is perpendicular. Which means to say this is of course 90 degrees. Not so. That is 90 degrees. So the question is, calculate the coordinates of R. The point of intersection of PR and QR. How do we work out the points of intersection? We see the two graphs equal to each other. So the one equation is this here, and that is the other equation. Not so. So what can I do is I can just say a third x plus 2 is equal to x minus 2. Okay? So you get over the equal sign. So it's going to be a third x minus x is equal to minus 2 minus 2. What's up? So what's a third x minus 1x? Negative 2 thirds. It's equal to negative. How do I get x on its own? Divide by negative 2 over 3 both sides. So x is equal to? It's going to give you 2 over 2 which is 6. So what do I do with this? I sub it. Can't be negative. You didn't do your homework, yeah? Am I right? Yes. Okay. So, you either substitute it into this one or that one to get the corresponding y value. Either. So we're going to sub it into the x plus, so x minus 2. So 6 minus 2 is 4. Therefore, r is 6 and Okay. 
And then the last question of this diagram, we are asked to calculate the area of triangle PQR. People, how do you calculate the area of a triangle? Half base times height. Not so? Yes. It's going to be a half. So area is equal to a half. My base. The base is going to be QP. Times the height, which is QR. Okay, the perpendicular height. Okay. So what do I need? How, how do you get the length of QP? Distance for me. Not so. So I say QP squared is equal to. Remove it. QP squared is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. So we go. That would simply give us zero minus. 1 squared plus 2 minus minus 1 squared. So that gives us square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is 10, I think. Huh? Root 10. So that is root 10. And then for QR, I don't have to write the formula down again. So I go QR. So it's going to be 6 minus 0 squared plus. Is 6 minus 0? 4 minus 2 squared. Okay. So it will be the square root of 6 squared uh, plus 2 squared. 2 root 10. Not so. It is that thing. So now with that formula in mind, we can now say that is something of QR. Well, sorry, I got the square. This shouldn't be a square. It will be of. So root 10 times 2 root 10. That's all. Half times 2, 1. The root 10 times root 10? 10. So it's going to be 10 units squared. Okay, you check if that's correct? Yes, sir. All right. Let's carry on. Tricks probably now. Yep. Question 4, 4.1. If theta is equal to 178,2 degrees and beta is equal to 273 degrees, write your answer. No, use a calculator to determine the value of the following. Okay. So what is theta? 178.2. So I say 10, 2 times 178.2 minus 1. So we got 10 of 2 times 178.2, close brackets, then you minus 1. It's negative 1, oh, negative 1, comma, 0, 6. Okay, it's not decreases, okay, because it's not the angle. Let's go to the next one. Here we have. Is it a bit bigger? So in number two we have eight and seven over twelve. Cos beta two hundred and seventy-three minus one seventy eight point two. Okay. Again, okay, put that in the calculator. That mixed fraction, we first press shift, and then that fraction button. You get the mixed fraction form. Okay? 8 and 7 over 12. Cos. 273 minus 178.2. Okay. 
It gives us negative. Negative, negative zero comments. Okay. The confusion is next. It says use your calculator, solve for x where x is less than 90. It's so cute. So what do I do first? So we'll carry on with this in our next lesson. People enjoy the lesson every day and your weekend. Morning class. For those of you who didn't complete the paper, please complete it for Monday. Okay.